Qin Shi Huangdi, the first emperor of China in 221 to 210 BC, was the mightiest man of his day. His empire was vaster and more powerful than that of Alexander the Great. He had conquered all of the kingdoms surrounding his own kingdom of Qin and unified them into one massive realm called China. But in the last years of his life, few, if anyone, saw him. The emperor lived in the most magnificent palace built to that date, in the capital of Xianyang. The palace had 270 pavilions. All of these were connected by secret underground passageways, allowing the emperor to move through the palace without anyone seeing him. He slept in a different room every night, and anyone who inadvertently laid eyes on him was instantly beheaded. Only a handful of men knew his whereabouts, and if they revealed it to anyone, they too were put to death. The first emperor had grown so terrified of human contact that when he had to leave the palace, he traveled incognito, disguising himself carefully. On one such trip through the provinces, he suddenly died. His body was borne back to the capital in the emperor's carriage, with a cart packed with salted fish trailing behind it to cover up the smell of the rotting corpse. No one was to know of his death. He died alone, far from his wives, his family, his friends, and his courtiers, accompanied only by a minister and a handful of eunuchs. Interpretation Xie Huangdi started off as the king of Qin, a fearless warrior of unbridled ambition. Writers of the time described him as a man with a waspish nose, eyes like slits, the voice of a jackal, and the heart of a tiger or wolf. He could be merciful sometimes, but more often he swallowed men up without a scruple. It was through trickery and violence that he conquered the provinces surrounding his own and created China, forging a single nation and culture out of many. As part of this process of unification, however, the first emperor outlawed the writings and teachings of Confucius, the philosopher whose ideas on the moral life had already become virtually a religion in Chinese culture. On Shi Huangdi's order, thousands of books relating to Confucius were burned, and anyone who quoted Confucius was to be beheaded. This made many enemies for the emperor, and he grew constantly afraid, even paranoid. The executions mounted. A contemporary, the writer Han Fei Tzu, noted that Qin has been victorious for four generations, yet has lived in constant terror and apprehension of destruction. As the emperor withdrew deeper and deeper into the palace to protect himself, he slowly lost control of the realm. Eunuchs and ministers enacted political policies without his approval or even his knowledge. They also plotted against him. By the end, he was emperor in name only and was so isolated that barely anyone knew he had died. He had probably been poisoned by the same scheming ministers who encouraged his isolation. That is what isolation brings. Retreat into a fortress and you lose contact with the sources of your power. You lose your ear for what is happening around you, as well as a sense of proportion. Instead of being safer, you cut yourself off from the kind of knowledge on which your life depends. Never enclose yourself so far from the streets that you cannot hear what is happening around you, including the plots against you.